The last lecture video discussed regulation of hormone secretion, particularly the mid-follicular phase. This video will focus on regulation of hormone secretion in the late follicular phase. So basically we're talking about the late antral phase at this point in time. Okay, so if you recall from the last video, we had an increase in estrogen levels that I'm going to label as C just so that it coincides with the previous diagram. And so we know that what was causing that estrogen secretion was because of LH. Remember that we had a slight increase in LH here, which then was causing estrogen levels to go up that we labeled C. So on your diagram here, I'm gonna start off with the increased estrogen levels, and I'm just gonna start off with C so that you can correspond, um, correlate that to the graph. Okay, so if you look real closely, this begins a positive feedback loop. So this is a little different than what we've done before. So we've started a positive feedback loop. So estrogen goes up and it binds to receptors on the hypothalamus, which then continues to synthesize and secrete gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which targets the anterior pituitary and tells it to synthesize and secrete LH and FSH. So where are we on our graph now? Okay, so LH, we're gonna illustrate on the diagram with a D as in dog, and that's this surge that we're seeing here, where that spike, where you have that spike of LH. FSH secretion, you get a little spike of FSH, so I'm gonna label that with an E for you. So that explains what's causing these spikes. Now these surges, the proper term for this are surges, these surges here are going to trigger ovulation. So if this is triggering ovulation, this must be happening within a graphene follicle because graphene follicles are the ones that rupture causing ovulation. Okay, now there's some really important functions here for this LH surge. So I'm gonna create a new page and we're gonna write out the functions that you need to know for the LH surge. So what's happening when we have this LH surge then? A number of things are happening. All right, this LH surge is gonna cause your granulosa cells, and I'm just gonna abbreviate granulosa cells GC. So it's gonna cause these granulosa cells to secrete paracrines to stimulate completion of meiosis one. Because remember, at the end of meiosis one, we now have a secondary oocyte. And remember when the graphene follicle ruptures at ovulation, it's releasing a secondary oocyte. Okay, so if, that, if you don't remember that part, that's okay, but go back and review oogenesis and look at where we are within oogenesis. So, Completion of meiosis one. Okay, now this surge also causes the granulosa cells to secrete progesterone. All right, so just so these numbers match up, I'm gonna go back and we're gonna illustrate this on the diagram by using a number two on the graph. Okay, so remember in another, in the previous video, I talked about this slight increase in progesterone. That right there, is due to the LH surge causing the granulosa cells to synthesize and secrete progesterone. Okay, so now let's go back again because this LH surge also does a few other things. All right, number three, it's gonna cause the granulosa cells to secrete enzymes to dissolve the follicle wall. Think about this, right? If you want the graphene follicle to rupture, for ovulation to take place, right? You've got to have the enzymes to dissolve the wall so that the graphene follicle can rupture and therefore ovulation can occur. And lastly, the fourth thing that LH that you need to know about, this LH surge is going to do, is it's going to cause the granulosa cells and the theca cells to differentiate and form the corpus luteum. So those are the four functions that LH is going to have. And remember that these are only occurring during that LH surge that we've represented as the letter D on your diagram. Okay. 
So now, here are the functions or the actions of estrogen, both during the follicular phase and pregnancy and the luteal phase. So it's important for you to go through and definitely review these actions of estrogen. We also have a table for the actions of progesterone. So it's very important that you review these actions of progesterone, some of which we haven't spoken about yet since we haven't yet talked about pregnancy.